Well, it finally happened. The power supply in my Ender 5 Plus has died and I am left with a dead printer. Well, unfortunately, I'm not the first one to have had this problem. We've had multiple stories in the Facebook group of people that have had dead printers and have had to RMA their power supplies or replace it with a Meanwell power supply. We've also had terrific videos from like Tripod's Garage who showed us why his power supply died and the internals of it versus a Meanwell. And then we had another video from TH3D who walked us through the differences between the two power supplies as well as the different current draws in this machine. Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you my story about how my machine died. I'm gonna show you the internals of my power supplies. And in the end, I have a slightly different root cause than just a substandard Chinese power supply. And I'm gonna tell you why I think that is as well as give you a solution to the problem that is slightly different than what others have offered. That's what I'm doing right here today. This is Cursey Fabrications. Let's go. So after using this printer for six months, why did my power supply finally die? Well, let me tell you what was going on. I had taken this printer indoors to do some mods on it because this time of year, the garage is pretty cold. And so I was changing out the hot end. I had everything done and it was time to print a Benchy. So I was printing my Benchy and all of a sudden the printer just stopped. It just shut down, no smoke, no theatrics or anything like that, no fire, but the printer just shut down. So I had that sinking suspicion that that was pretty much the end of it, went over to it, switches were on, everything was still good, just would not power on, the printer was dead. So what was different about this situation that I think caused my printer to finally die? Well, the only real difference between how I've been printing and what I was doing then was the environment. So out here in the garage, we're talking days of 30 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, it's been pretty cold out here. And indoors, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which, you know, about what we keep the heat on. So I believe that what happened finally was that I had heated up the supply and the environment it was running in enough to finally burn it up. That's just my theory. I think it makes the most sense with the information I have that the temperatures just exceeded what this supply was finally able to handle. So let's look at the supply. Let's look at how it burnt up and then we're going to do some more testing to show you what I found. So here we are with the power supply that comes with the printer. This is the Changling. P500 watt, 24 volt power supply. Now let's take a look at what I found when I pulled this apart. Well, first of all, there were some shaky components that had come loose, some parts of components, really. And what I have here, these two components right here, are completely burnt to a crisp. Probably see them right there. And they are toasty. They are just completely burnt up, which means that most likely they are beyond spec. Now, I believe these are two thermistors. They were designed to change the amount. Oh, there it goes, it's breaking some more. Yep, all right. They were designed to regulate the current as this thing comes through here, but as you can see, they have been completely overused uh, beyond spec. So this was my first clue as to what was going on here. Now, I will make the assumption, because I'm a glass half full kind of guy, that this power supply is built to spec to handle what the label said. This thing does have certifications. It is CE and FCC certified. This thing has not just been taken off of a floor and shoved out into this printer. This thing actually has certifications, which means it has been through testing. But unfortunately, these have burnt up. So after I was done taking a look at this supply, I wanted to get my printer back up and running again. So I went and grabbed one of these Ziltec 24 volt 500 watt power supplies to just get my printer back up and running. 
Now when I did that, I had the familiar smell that I had with this guy. Now opening this one up, this is still a good supply. I haven't done anything to it, but you will find that in some ways it is similar to this guy. They're not identical, but you know, they're built in similar ways. And I will tell you, I've been using these Ziltec supplies without any problems. I trust Ziltec as a supplier. And while these are cheap supplies, I mean, you can get this guy for like 30 bucks off of Ziltec's website, they aren't unreliable, right? If you run it at spec, you shouldn't have any problems. And I was smelling that immediate burning smell that I had smelled before on the Chang Lang before it died. So I immediately shut off the printer. So these are two inexpensive supplies, but again, certifications and everything intact, these should work. Cheap doesn't necessarily mean non-functional or crap. It just means cheap. And it may not have some of the features that something like a high dollar Meanwell supply has, but they should perform up to spec. So, this is what I was thinking. So let's take a look at this Meanwell supply while I have it here on the counter to compare it to. So the Meanwell supply is chock full of components. You can definitely tell as others have shown. This is a 600 watt Meanwell supply. This is the 500 watt Chang Lang. And you can tell, sure, these aren't in the same category. These are not the same class of power supply. But I'll tell you, one thing that the Meanwell supply offers that this one doesn't, this offers a certain amount of overload protection. This has voltage protection over amperage protection. It has overheat protection, all of that built into the supply. And in fact, Meanwell even guarantees their supplies will work to a certain amount of over the rating. Now that's something these don't offer, but Meanwell does. And that's where some of this extra componentry comes from is you'll actually find logic chips in here where you don't see anything like that in these. This actually has intelligence. This actually is doing some checks to make sure the power supply is still healthy. And as you can see, this is a beefy power supply designed to put out much more power than what it's rated as because they have a warranty and they want to honor that warranty. So for the final step in this process of finding out why did these less expensive supplies die. I'm going to hook up my Meanwell supply back to my printer and we're going to take a look at exactly how much power this printer is pulling when you do different kinds of operations on it. So first things first, let me show you the setup that we'll be using to test this. This is a Cumin power meter that I have set up that will measure various components of the electrical input. It will measure things like voltage, amperage, and ultimately what I have it set on, wattage which we can then use to compare to the power supply that we're running it against. So what I have is the power supply is connected directly through this. This is a 600 watt Meanwell power supply that is then hooked up to my Ender 5 Plus printer. I'm gonna power on the printer. As I power it on, we will be able to watch how various components of the printer use energy. So we'll be able to see when we power up the hot end, how much wattage it uses, how we power up the print bed, how much it uses, and in the end, how much total power might we use on this printer and what size power supply do we need to actually power that. So at this point, we are obviously reading zero. The printer is not turned on. So let me turn it on and find out what the base power consumption is of the printer. So as you see, when we first turn on the printer, we're using about 20 watts of power. Obviously not much, we're pretty much powering some fans and the electronics. So next up, let's heat up the hot end and see how much power the hot end uses. So at this point, the hot end cuts on and we are almost at 70 watts. So it is a 50 watt hot end. That's how much power the hot end uses in order to heat up the filament up to the 200 or so degrees that we're looking for. Now finally, let's turn on the bed while the hot end is heating up to see how much power that uses. So we really, really jump up at this point. So we are looking at a heat bed that consumes about 500 watts of power all by itself. We jumped up from about 70 watts to about 570 watts just turning on the heat bed. 
which means that technically this is an almost 600 watt printer. Now keep in mind, one thing I wanted to mention is that we are consuming 600 watts. Now this is to the wall. The actual components may be using a little bit less because there's some inefficiencies in the power supply, but that's gonna be pretty close to actual printer consumption. It's definitely how much we're pulling from the wall. Now I compared this to the numbers that TH3D pulled off of his when he was actually testing each of the individual components through the DC lines. He was getting about 427 watts off of just the bed and he was getting 700 watts total, give or take a little bit, off of the whole printer. So my numbers and his numbers really line up to support the fact that this is somewhere in the neighborhood of a 600 watt printer maybe all the way up to 700 depending on which supply you use because again depending on the power supplies there may be different levels of efficiency i did similar tests to this with my ziltec power supply and i did find the ziltec power supply actually did use somewhere in the neighborhood of 650 watts again lower end power supply not quite as efficient as the 600 watt power supply that i'm using now so now that we know how much power that this is going to use under full load, let's take a look at a few options that are available for replacement power supplies. Now, all three of the options I'm about to present are Meanwell power supplies, and there's actually a couple of good reasons for that. Number one, I find that they're readily available. You can find them on Amazon, you can find them from many other retailers, and they should be available around the world. Uh, number two, these power supplies offer a lot of protections and a lot of features versus a lot of the cheaper generic power supplies. For example, all of the ones I'm gonna be talking about today have short circuit, overload, over voltage, and over temperature protection standard as part of these supplies, which means that you're gonna be a lot safer with these supplies because if something goes wrong internally, hopefully the supply will catch it and shut down ahead of time before we burn anything up and potentially cause a fire. So, Let's look at the three options that I found. These are options that have either been recommended by others or that I have found myself. As I go through these power supplies, I'm gonna put the spec sheets up over here so that you can follow along with what I'm talking about. The first supply we're looking at is the Meanwell SE450 series, and this is a 450 watt power supply spec. Now, looking at the data sheet, we see that this power supply has an overload of 105 to 150% of rated output. That means theoretically, according to their specs, you should be able to run this power supply at least for some amount of time up to 150% of the spec, which is gonna be 675 watts if you do the math. Now, the problem I have with using this supply is that you're going to be running at that 600 watts, which is 150 watts more than spec, most of the time, or at least a relatively large percentage of the time while this printer's running. I mean, think about it. The bed itself uses 500 watts or so, which means you are immediately over spec anytime that bed's heating up. So I really don't like the idea of running a 450 watt power supply on something that is going to be constantly overrunning 450 watts. Now, according to the spec sheet, I think you're going to be fine running it. I don't know since you're overloading it, how it's going to decrease the life of that power supply or even how that affects your warranty. That's not specified here, but that's my opinion. The next one is the Meanwell RSP 500 series. This is the supply that is being recommended by Creality. It's the replacement being sold on their website, as well as being recommended in multiple forums that I follow. Now, again, at 500 watt spec, we're already at peak, just running the bed. Now, obviously, once our hot end kicks in, we're, we're way over at that point. Uh, we're a good 70 watts over spec at that point. According to the spec sheet, we can run at an overload power of 105 to 130% of rated power, which puts us at about 650 watts. Now, again, we should be able to run at 650 watts or up to it, but we're still pushing the limits of what that power supply is meant to handle. At 650 watts, we would be 150 watts over its rating and we would be at peak maximum output power, which is really gonna be taxing that supply. 
Again, with all the safety features, maybe it would shut itself down before we'd have any damage to the supply or before we'd have any electrical problems, but still not something that I really want to do to a power supply. I believe that the spec value is there for a reason and you really shouldn't exceed it if you have a choice. Now, the last supply that I've got here is a Meanwell SE600 series supply. Now, this one is rated, again, with an overload value of 105 to 125% of rated value, which puts us at a peak maximum of 750 watts, way over what, I, what we need for this printer. And the 600 watts puts us right at what we need which means at stock, we won't be over pushing that power supply any. We saw from the testing that the pulled power for this printer is 570 watts using that supply. You'll notice that this power supply is not a stock form factor, and that's something to definitely take into account when you're buying a replacement supply. So the 500 watt, the 450 watt will fit into this chassis. They're pretty much drop in replacements. You might want to drill some extra holes if they don't line up, but if you do buy the 500 watt from Creality, it does line up with the side of the chassis and you're done. Now, as I said, it's up to you if you want to overload or overcurrent those power supplies. Again, according to the spec sheets, you're still within a safe range. I don't know what you're gonna to do to the overall life of that power supply though. So just keep all that in mind. It's the easier solution but in my opinion, it is not the best solution. So that's why I bought the 600 watt power supply for myself. So as I mentioned, this is not going to fit in the chassis. I will turn this over real quick. We'll take a look at how it fits. You'll see that it's not gonna fit inside. And then while we've got it turned over, I'll show you how I chose to wire this power supply up. Now I found that the easiest way to get to the components in this box is not flipping the printer over. Now you can sure do that, but you could mess with your alignment. You could damage something about your carriages. And I really don't like to worry about that. So following along with like what I saw on Tripod's garage, I think that this is by far the easiest way to get to these components. If you'll simply pull those four screws out, two on the front and two on the back, then you can get to this box without too many problems and flip it over. So once you get it flipped over, it's pretty easy. Then you can get the bottom off, undo your fan plug. Now you have access to all of the electrodes. And again, I've already done the mods on mine because I had to figure it out obviously before I did this video. But the original power supply went right back here. You might be able to see the original mounting holes here and the switch port goes right here. So this went here all of the wires came back towards this area and attached here. Now, as I said, if you get the 450 watt or the 500 watt replacement, it is a simple swap. Go watch TH3D's video. They have a very good instruction about how to swap out these power supplies and not mess up your wiring. But if you're gonna go with the 600 watt supply, you're going to have a problem. This is not going to fit in this chassis. And even if you decided I'm going to extend all of my wires, I'm going to make everything sit flush, I'm gonna find a way, because theoretically it, it fits, then you still may run into a heating problem because what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be taking all of the heat that this power supply generates and dumping it possibly onto this board, or if you find a way to do it this way, you're gonna be dumping it one way or the other, as this power supply heats up, it's gonna be in your chassis with your electronics. It's probably not a good idea. So I decided against that for my installation. Now, if you're not going to install it inside the box, you still have to get the wires to it. So that's where I came up with the idea of simply running the wires to the back of the chassis. Now, hopefully you can see this here and here. I've gone in here and I've drilled two three-fourths inch holes that go right here. And then out of each side, I've pulled the necessary wires. So on this side are my DC wires. These are the ones going to components. And on this side are my AC wires. These are the ones coming from my switch and from my wall plug here. So you can see if I mount it this way, see, oh, sorry, if you mount it this way, these DC plugs all go on this side 
AC plugs will go to this side and everything mounts nicely. Now, I am pulling these wires pretty much to the max limits. I have verified that I'm not over pulling them or putting too much stress on any of these connectors, but mine barely reach. Now, if you go for this mod, there's a possibility that you are going to have to replace some of these wires if they don't quite reach. But anyway, this is how I've done it. Uh, I'm probably popping up here on the screen showing me drilling these holes. And then after you drill these holes, you'll need some grommets to put around in these holes in order to keep the wires from being cut by the sharp metal. Now, these are simple assorted grommets that you can buy. As you can see, they come in different sizes. The ones I used are the 7 16 by 3 quarters. It fits a 3 quarters inch opening, goes to a 7 16 hole. At that point, I could pull all my wires through here. A tip when you're installing a grommet, boil these or at least place them in some really hot water first. They will soften up really nicely because they're just rubber and then they'll fit in the way that it's supposed to. Then you can pull the wires through. I hope that helps. Now, let's get this all buttoned back up, flipped back over, mounted, and I'll show you what I have planned for the rear of this chassis. So everything's buttoned up on the inside. Now let's take a look at how I plan on mounting this power supply to the chassis. So I have spent the past couple of days iterating on these designs and I wanted something that would add safety to this supply as well as be easy to install. Now please ignore any print quality issues with these. These were printed fast because I've, like I said, I've been making a lot of prototypes. These have been designed to make it easy to take in and out any of the wires as well as be able to slide on these wonderful little protectors that this supply comes with. You just slide these in the side. I'll show you that in a minute when I get it installed. Now, due to the way I designed these, you can either put your wires on first and then slide on the covers and attach them, or you can put these on first and then attach the wires. I'm gonna just show you the way I find it most convenient to attach this and then we'll go from there. So there it is, all installed, the custom design mounting bracket for the SC600 power supply. Designed it obviously for this printer so that you can get the wires in the right side and everything, but obviously you could use this for anything that had aluminum extrusions and you wanted to mount this power supply. And had a couple of design goals in mind. Obviously I wanted to make sure it was safe, first and foremost. With these electrical components exposed on the front and back, it could be a hazard. You want to keep these covered. It comes with these nice plastic strips in here uh, that I showed installing. Please reinstall those on yours because it keeps you from sticking your finger in here, particularly on this back side, which is the AC side. These wires are going to be live AC. You need to make sure they're covered. By using this, it should limit the chance of you sticking your fingers or anything else in here, since the only place you could really get in would be this direction, and that's facing the printer. Obviously, no warranty implied or expressed, whatever they say, no warranty on this, but this should make this a lot safer. 
Obviously, the other thing I was looking for is making sure I was maintaining good airflow. So we've got these grills on the front and back that should keep you from blocking it, should keep anything from getting stuck in here and hindering the airflow of this power supply and keeping it cool. I will, of course, be releasing this on Thingiverse and you can download it from there directly. And I will also release my step files for this in case you wanna make any modifications or if you get this power supply and something's off a little bit, that you can fix it yourself. Now that it's all installed, let's go ahead and sum up this video and see where this leaves us. So now that we've repaired the printer, now that it has a good power supply on it, where does that leave the Ender 5 Plus in my book? Let's start there. Well, the Ender 5 Plus is still a terrific printer. I'm still getting good prints out of it. The Benchy that was on it while it died turned out really good as far as it made it. So the Ender 5 Plus is still a good framework. Now, obviously I've determined that there is a fatal flaw with the electrical design of this printer, and I don't see any way anyone's gonna get around replacing the power supply on this printer anymore. I once thought that this was a quality control issue, one that would hopefully get worked out, or at least one that Creality would be taken care of via warranties. But I have to wonder if this is going to be an ongoing problem without a replacement of this power supply. Now, Creality, of course, could decide to go with the Meanwell 500, which will give them that leeway to stop the power supplies from dying. I still believe that this needs a 600 watt power supply. Maybe they can find a cheaper alternative to the Meanwell that's rated for 600. That's always an option. I'm going to send this video link to Creality directly, see what they say, see if they're gonna make any changes after they see what I've done and after they see what I found. I don't know what to expect. I'm going to include a link to this video as an addendum to the review and preview of this printer that I've already put here on YouTube. I'm also going to put up a card if I can on those videos to link people over here. I still believe all of the information I put in those videos. Unfortunately, there's a big addendum here with what we know now of this power supply. So I'm gonna include those in the description and as a card because I don't want people to be caught off guard if at all possible. Now. If you've had to make these changes to your printer, if you've put a power supply on it, please let us know in the description how that's worked out for you. Put, if you put one of TH3D's 450's, if you put a 500 on here from Meanwell, let us know how those are doing. If you're still running a stock power supply, let us know how long you've been running it. It's good for the community to know what other experiences people are having, not just mine and not just in the, the Facebook groups, but you know, hopefully a wider audience. Now, if you want to make these changes yourself, if you like my 600 mod, I'm going to include a link to all of the parts in the description of this video. I will, of course, have some screws. I will have the power supply itself, and I will have the grommets and hole saw you need to modify the printer itself if this is something you do. I will also include a link to that 500 watts of power supply that I've talked about. And if you are interested in watching TH3Ds, or Tripods Garage videos, I will include a link to those as well because again, those guys had some terrific content about the state of this power supply. In the end, this is a video that I really didn't wanna to have to make, but unfortunately did need to make. I know a lot of you visit this channel for information on this printer. And now that I have seen the problem myself, I was able to debug it myself and these are my findings. Again, this video represents my opinion on this. I am not an electrical engineer. If you have any further questions or need more of an authoritative answer on any of this, please check out the advice from an electrician or an electrical engineer. They can help you out further. Again, thanks for joining me here on this channel. Thanks for following along with me as I work with my Ender 5 Plus. I still have lots more content coming with the Ender 5 Plus as well as some other printers and projects. Thanks again. This has been Chris for Curzy Fabrications. See you next time.